maria.com. I just finished a kitchen project and I wanted to share it with you in hopes that it might help you if you decide to do the same thing yourself. I should warn you that this is my first time ever doing it and it didn't turn out 100% perfect, but I think that my tips could be really helpful if you are looking to do concrete countertops over your um, existing laminate countertops. I had the idea of doing concrete countertops over my existing laminate countertops after reading several blogs and they have great step-by-step -step instructions on these blogs so I will link to those also but I, ha I still had questions about exactly how much time it was going to take and how to get the results I wanted so I hope this will help you. Um, because I'm doing, I was doing the countertops the way my kitchen is, it sort of snowballed a little bit and I ended up also deciding to replace the sink and paint my backsplash. So everything combined together is kind of what this whole project was. We decided we wanted to try and get this done in about three days. We had a short school break for our kids. And so our, my in-laws were so gracious to take our kids for a few days for us while we worked on this. I have found it's just better to not have my kids around while I'm doing projects like this because I get grumpy and kids need to eat and nap and it doesn't work very good when you've got dust flying everywhere and so that's the way that I did it and I wanted to see if I could get it done that quickly. I can't promise that your results are going to turn out the same as mine but I hope that this will be helpful to you anyway. The things that I used were, I got some safety goggles and gloves to protect myself along with a dust mask, which is absolutely necessary. I also bought some of those plastic drop cloths to keep the dust in my kitchen and not all over my house, although it still will get all over your house too. I also used the, drop, the plastic drop cloths to protect my cabinets and my floor from the concrete. So for the countertop project, you need a variety of different grits of sandpaper, 80, 150, 220, and 320. Um, a sander, I actually used my orbital sander, and a sanding block, a chisel, a putty knife, or a straight edge trowel, um, a container for mixing, and then I use Henry's feather finish. Um, I've also heard of Artex, it's the same stuff pretty much I think. Henry's was just available at Home Depot, so that's what I got. And this was one thing that varied a lot. I noticed on blogs is some people use like seven boxes of concrete, and other people said they only use two. So I bought five, and I actually only ended up using one. But I would suggest probably for most kitchens, probably you need a couple boxes of that. Um, for the top coat, I went with. Safe Coat Acrylac, or acrylic, I don't know how you say it. Anyway, um, and 511 Impregnator and a brush for the top coat. Those were recommended by, I think it was Young House Love that recommended those. There are other things out there. I know that I did a lot of research. There's chains and ghost shield, stuff like that. But they, those ones, the bloggers had not returned and said how well they, they had held up. So I went with the one where people said that it was holding up good. For painting my backsplash, I used rollers, paint, painter's tape, brush. The paint I ended up using is just the one that I could find that said it would be, was good for multiple surfaces. I wanted countertop paint, but I couldn't find it in white, so that's what we went with. And for the sink, there was a checklist on there, and we also replaced our faucet. So I just used the checklist that was on the box of the sink I bought. I started on a Wednesday and I cleaned out my cupboards. I knew that everything was going to get dusty and I just wanted to pull everything out and go through all of my stuff anyway. So I had boxes and I just cleaned everything out of the cupboards and put those in my bedroom. And then I cleaned off the counters really good. I removed the caulk 
that was already existing. We pulled out the oven and the fridge and the sink. I hung plastic up to keep all the dust mostly in the kitchen and then I also put plastic drop cloths around the cabinets and onto the floor so that it wouldn't get my floor and my cabinets all dirty, all ruined. And I also sanded my backsplash and cleaned that really good too. So once all that was done, I just went to it. I did two cups of the Henry's Feather Finish with one cup of water and I just used a painting stick to stir it up. And it's, it dries fairly quickly so you want to work pretty quick. And you just kind of plop it on your countertop and start spreading it out. I used horizontal and vertical strokes with my trowel. If you do a more steep angle, you're going to pull more of it off. If you kind of do more of a horizontal angle, then you're going to put more on. For the first coat, it might not seem like it's sticking at first, but it will. For the edges, I just put some on my latex glove and I just rubbed it on, literally. And the corners, I did a little bit heavier because I had that sharp angle on my corner and I wanted to be a little more rounded. So I filled that in with my hands and just kind of smoothed it out. At some places I kind of went over with the trowel a little bit too. We let that dry overnight. I do wish that I would have done two coats on the first day instead of just one. But we had our kids with us that day so it was a little bit harder. Um, so anyway, I did that first coat. I let it dry and then I sanded. Removed the dust with a vacuum cleaner and then wiped off any excess. And then I went ahead and did another coat. The dry time between, on the box I think it said two to four or something like that. I'd only scheduled three hours of dry time. And after three hours it wasn't dry and I was getting nervous. Even though some spots were still a little bit dark where I could tell they weren't completely dry, it still was fine to sand it after about three hours. Clean off all the dust again and apply another layer of, of the concrete. I'm going to give you a quick tip here on getting your texture. If you want more of a smooth texture, you're going to want to use that more vertical angle and get quite a bit off and just do really thin coats. If you're wanting more of the kind of the stone look with the variation in color, if you hold it more at a horizontal angle, your trowel, and then you kind of just drag it, you'll leave behind some kind of organic spots and that would I would recommend doing that kind of texturing on your second coat and then go in after you sand it and your third coat you fill in all that to make it a nice smooth texture. I sanded again after my third coat I sanded for six hours and this is I'll give you a tip the top things I would change at the end and that's one of them and then after you've sanded your last time, you are going to apply the impregnator sealer. This doesn't have to look perfect when you put it on. Try and do a nice even coat, but it just absorbs in so you're not going to have streaks from your brush marks or things like that um, or your roller or whatever. I actually only needed probably a half hour between the first coat of impregnator to the second. After the second coat, I just let that cure. On the bottle it says 24 hours to cure. I only had 12 so that's what I did. I did 12 hours to cure the impregnator. The next day while I was waiting for the impregnator to cure I taped off my countertop and I did I painted my backsplash. One thing that you're really going to want to be careful of when you're painting your if you decide to paint a backsplash is make sure it's you've sanded it really great, cleaned it really great, and there's absolutely no oil. I thought I did great getting all the grease off, but there are a few spots where there was it didn't stick very well because I still had grease. And then trying to peel that paint off, it's kind of a mess and it makes things worse. Once my backsplash was painted and I waited my 12 hours for that to cure, my first coat of safe coat. And I used a roller for the first coat which made it very, very, very bumpy. I was hoping it would be just like when you paint and you use a nice foam roller, it just has a slight bump, 
slight bumps on it, but there was bubbles and bumps and it didn't work out good. So then when I got ready to apply the next coat of Safe Coat, I sanded a little bit and I kind of got those bumps off and I decided to go with the brush for the next coat. So I ended up doing about three hours in between each layer of Safe Coat for it to dry. And I did three coats of the Safe Coat. And then I let that cure overnight. The next morning we installed our sink we caulked everything and that's another problem that I ended up with is when I caulk I like to tape off with painters tape so I get a nice straight edge especially this time I was doing white caulk on the backsplash and clear on the sink so when I taped it off it made a nice pretty caulk line but when I pulled the tape off it pulled up my safe coat I ended up having to do one more coat of the um, of the safe coat because I peeled it up when I pulled off my tape, my painter's tape. Well, we really love how it turned out. It's beautiful. It's much brighter in here. But there are three things that I would have changed. Number three, I would allow for a little bit of time. It was kind of stressful when I've been sanding for six hours and trying to get my top of the concrete to be smooth and perfect. I was, I read all these blog posts to, you know, sand it really good, so I spent six hours sanding, and I was just tired, and I couldn't think straight, and I was like, okay, I'm done, I'm sealing this, I'm going to bed. Um, if I would have had a little more time, I maybe would have thought about what I should have done, which is I recommend, rather than the three coats that I did and six hours of sanding at the end there, is I would have done four coats and just like I did the first three you know first one's more of a smooth coat second one kind of get your texture in there if you want to go for that the third coat really filling everything in good sand it really well and then the fourth coat would be just going in and and filling in those scratches, any extra dings, and getting it really nice and smooth. So I wish I would have done that. Just last coat, keep keeping your trowel or your putty knife real vertical and just filling in just those scratches and dings to get a nice clean surface. I still have dings and scratches, which is okay. It's it's not a big deal, but I would have done four coats had I if I were to do it again. And the, and the number one thing I would change is I would research a sprayer for your top coat. The Safe Coat Acrylac, Acrylic, whatever it's called, will be streaky if you use a brush. And for me, I feel like that doesn't look very professional. It looks like a DIY job. That's my biggest pet peeve about it. My sister has this little quote that she says is anything worth doing is worth doing poorly and when she first said that I thought it was kind of silly because I've heard the opposite so many times but I really have started to take this to heart because so many times we want to do something but we want it to be so perfect that we don't even dare try it and I think with these countertops you kind of learn to love the imperfections and that's the look that they kind of have and I think that's how it should be. Good luck!